this is Sue Painter, the Confident Marketer, and today I'm going to do a little video that gives you six tips for good copywriting. How to <clears throat> use words to paint a picture of your business, and the tags for this training are copywriting, sales copy, and writing tips. <clears throat> and this is really, we're going to have kind of a little bit of fun with this. This all got started, the idea for this vlog got started when I got in the mail this solutions catalog products that make life easier we get these catalogs all the time and as you can tell from the front cover it's usually all about household stuff you know glass containers for the refrigerator and things to help you clean the house that kind of stuff so i got this catalog and i usually throw it away but i decided to look in it this time because we needed some new glass containers for our refrigerator so I was flipping through this and all of a sudden I got to a page and here's the copy that I saw. It's all about options. You'll never get bored with this powerful and versatile massager. It's like getting three in one. This waterproof mini can be used with or without the smooth or ribbed silicone sleeves. Five push button vibration patterns are whisper quiet. Well, that just cracked me up. I never expected to see anything like that in a solutions catalog. And as you can see, these words paint a really powerful picture. You do not have to see the picture of the item to know what this is. And in fact, I'm not going to show the picture of the item. I'd probably be too embarrassed to do that. But you get the picture. So it gave me the idea that I wanted to talk about how powerful our descriptors are and how we really need to use those powerful descriptors in our copy. So I'm going to give you six tips about painting your business with words. <clears throat> and the first one is use unique descriptors. And we're going to go back and look at that paragraph of copy just in a minute and judge it by these six tips. Try the first two words rule. You want to tease with the first two words, and I'm going to give you some examples of that here in just a little bit. Study catalog copy. If you feel like you're not a good copywriter, get a couple of catalogs and study the copy, how they describe the items. I know that they also usually have a picture, but they really, really depend on the copy to sell the items. Develop copy for each product and service you provide. And I, this is a mistake that I see business owners doing a lot. They will write copy or have copy developed for their website and their brochure, but they will not then break it out and develop copy specifically for each product and service. So they kind of make a default into a general description that doesn't paint a picture for the client. Be solution based. You will uh, make a lot more sales if what you offer is actually the solution to a problem someone has. And then engage your customers emotions. Copywriting is about engaging the emotions, the descriptive words. Uh, you want to get an emotional response because as we know people buy on emotion and then they justify what they have bought with logic, right? So let's take a little bit closer look at this copy and those six tips about uh, painting your business with words that I just gave you. First of all, use unique descriptors. Well, powerful and versatile massager, that's pretty unique. And they do not, then the next tip was try the first two words, rule T's. They really don't do that in here. They don't, um, they don't have two words that just let you know right away what this object is. Um, they have developed in this catalog, of course, copy for each and every product. This copy is very solution based. It's powerful. It gives you options. There's a five push button different patterns and whisper quiet, which might be something that a person who wanted this item could really, really use. So they're definitely solution based and they're, are they engaging the customer's emotions? Well, yes, you'll never get bored. You'll never get bored with this powerful and versatile massager. So they have hit most of those six tips. And that just tickled me. I just, I was so flabbergasted to see this in this catalog that it just gave me a chuckle. I thought I'd share it with you. Okay, well, another catalog that's really good to study is the J. Peterman Company. 
If you're old enough to have watched Seinfeld, you know that J. Peterman Company was legendary. Elaine worked as a copywriter for the J. Peterman Company in that TV show. And this is a copy of a page from their current catalog. You can see that they have a picture of the item here, but then here they have quite a bit of copy just to sell what looks like a pretty normal hoodie. We're going to take a closer look at this copy. As you can see, it actually runs off the screen. So they're very copy. J. Peterman is known for their kind of wild, off-the-wall descriptions of the items that they sell. So here's what they say about this hoodie. Cups and cups of fresh, small-batched Panama coffee, walks in the woods, fresh huckleberries, dinner for eight, laughing to the point of soreness, talking deep and late, waltzing at midnight with him, sleeping in. And so here are the descriptors now of the actual item. After all this copy, they finally get down to what the thing is. It's nothing more than a hooded cardigan. And actually, if you will look, there's a misspelling right there. That should be, there should be an R in there. Um, this, but it is a cotton blend. But what do they call this cotton blend? They call it cotton cashmere. So they have given it a very unique descriptor and an upscale descriptor. And then under the hooded cardigan, it says better than all things hooded. So perfect over a T and distracting over just you. So they throw a little bit of sizzle in there, a little bit of sex. They finally get around to talking about what the cotton, the, that it's a cotton blend. And so you can see that they have very descriptive copy for something that's just a hoodie. But that is the mark of J. Peterman. Uh, they have their descriptors are are really things that you can learn from if you want to get a J. Peterman catalog. You'll learn a lot about copywriting from that. So here are some things that I have actually rewritten for clients, and you can see the before and the after. So we're going to go through these. The before was this week, get a free lunch at Damo's, and that's a local restaurant here in the Nashville area. After the rewrite, free lunch this week at Damo's. Well, do you see that one of my tips was using the first two words rule, the T's? You're going to get a lot, if you got a postcard that said this week, get a free lunch at Damo's, or if you got a postcard that said free lunch this week at Damo's, you're more than likely going to go and respond to the free lunch exclamation point than the this week. So free lunch tells the customer what they get. The first two words before the rewrite this week doesn't tell anything. Then the next one, why emotions can make you sick. Well, after the rewrite, emotions and illness, is there a connection? Emotions and illness, use that two word rule. It You automatically know that what you're going to be reading is about those two topics. Eating for a healthy heart, on sale this week. That really says nothing. So after the rewrite, save 20% and help your heart too. The, the save 20% is the teaser. Those first two words immediately tell the prospect what it is they're going to get. Another one, it isn't as hard as you think to make a 3D card. Now that's just a terrible title. That's just a sentence that should be in the copy somewhere. So I rewrote it, super easy 3D, 3D cards. Super easy 3D cards. Now a card maker will know that 3D refers to a card that is three-dimensional. It stands up or it pops up or something like that. It's an engineered card. So do you see how much more compelling that super easy 3D cards is? Before, it's true that a lot of people hate to make videos. After the rewrite, video shy, here's how to fix that. This ebook helped me in my business a lot. Now that's something like a testimonial somebody might give you. You would want to re rewrite their testimonial with their permission, of course, to say something like, get this book, the best ever help for my business. And then it takes a long time to learn how to spot a reproduction antique. Scared of repros? The more you look at very fan antiques, the quicker you'll learn to spot them. So this rewrite does call out scared of repros that engenders an emotional response in the reader 
but it also gives the reader an idea of what they're going to learn. The more you look at very fine antiques, the other before one doesn't really tell them. It says it takes a long time to learn how to spot a repro, but it doesn't say how to do that. So the after the rewrite engages their emotions and gives them hope that they will at one point be able to tell a fine antique from a reproduction. So those are what I wanted to talk about today, just six tips for good copywriting, how to use words to paint a picture of your business. I hope this has been kind of fun for you and also a help and that you'll go back and look at the copy for your business and make some changes that'll give you a help. This is Sue Painter, the Confident Marketer, signing off for now. Bye-bye.